Hey guys, today I want to discuss a solution to the first problem of this year's IMO. Let's take a look at the problem statement. We are asked to find all real numbers alpha such that for every positive integer n, we have that n divides the following sum, namely the floor of alpha plus the floor of 2 alpha and so on up to plus the floor of n times alpha. Here, the floor of a real number is the largest integer less than or equal to this number. The main difficulty in this problem is to get an understanding of this sum, which I want to denote by f of n. Whenever we have a problem using floor functions, a first good idea is to use the bound that the floor of a real number is less than or equal to this real number. And this gives us a first inequality for our number f of n, namely that f of n is less than or equal to alpha plus 2 alpha plus so on plus n times alpha. For this sum, we know how to express it as a product. Namely, we can write this as alpha times n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Equality holds here if and only if alpha is an integer. And in this case, we can just consider this product here on the right hand side. And we see that this product is divisible by n if alpha divided by 2 is an integer. So if alpha is a multiple of 2. So we can write down our first solutions for alpha, namely alpha even. Moreover, this observation here allows us to subtract multiples of 2 from alpha without changing anything. Namely, if we write alpha equal 2 times k plus r, where k should be an integer and r should be between 0 and 2, then we can write f of n equals 2k plus floor of r plus 4k plus floor of 2 times r and so on up to 2k times n plus floor of r times n. For the terms without floor, we can write again as above 2 times k times n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then we have the remaining terms, namely plus floor of r, plus and so on, plus floor of n times r. We see that the first sum here is an integer divisible by n. And therefore, we know that f of n is divisible by n if and only if this second sum here is divisible by n. Since the second sum here is just f of n of alpha replaced by r, we can assume without loss of generality that alpha is between 0 and 2. We already dealt with the case that alpha is equal to 0 since 0 is even and therefore it's enough to consider the case that alpha is in 0, 2 excluded 0. Now it's time to write down the second inequality we always get when dealing with floor functions. Namely, that the floor of a real number is greater than the real number minus 1. So we get that f of n is greater then alpha plus 2 alpha plus so on plus n times alpha minus n because we have n summits. This can be written as alpha times n times n plus 1 divided by 2 minus n. These two inequalities here imply that f of n lies in a half open interval of length n. Therefore, there is exactly one integer value in this interval that is divisible by n and we can write this value down. Namely, this value is equal to alpha times n plus 1 divided by 2. Now the floor of this times n. Since f of n is divisible by n, we know that f of n must be equal to this value. We are dealing with the case that alpha is an open interval 0, 2. And therefore, alpha divided by 2 is less than 1. This implies that if n increases by 1, this term here inside the floor brackets increases by less than 1. Therefore, we expect that at some point, if n increases by 1, then this term here will not jump over the next integer and therefore this floor value here stays the same. This seems unlikely and therefore let's take a closer look what happens in that case. So let alpha times n plus 1 divided by 2 and the floor of this be equal to the floor of alpha times n plus 2 divided by 2. 
then we can calculate the difference f of n plus 1 minus f of n to be equal to the floor of alpha times n plus 1 divided by 2. On the other hand, if we take a look at the representation of f of n, we see that this difference here is also equal to the floor of n plus 1 times alpha. This is impossible if the difference of these two terms inside the floor functions, namely alpha times n plus 1 divided by 2, is greater than or equal to 1. In other words, if n is greater than or equal to 2 divided by alpha minus 1, we get a contradiction. So the only thing left to prove is to find a positive integer n satisfying this inequality and this equality here. We do this by taking m to be equal to the ceiling of this value, so the ceiling of 2 divided by alpha minus 1, and k via integer large enough. And we want to consider integers n between m and m plus k. If this k here is large enough, we can conclude that alpha divided by 2 times k is less than k minus 1, since alpha divided by 2 is between 0 and 1. This allows us to bound the difference floor of alpha times m plus k plus 1 divided by 2 minus floor of alpha times m plus 1 divided by 2 from above. Namely, this is less than the difference of the two terms inside the floor brackets, which is alpha k divided by 2, and then we have to add a plus 1. Using k large enough, we get that this is less than k. Now n can attain k plus 1 different values from m to m plus k, but since the difference of these two terms here is less than k, we know that this term can only attain k different values for all the k plus 1 different values for n. Therefore, we can find two different values for n in this interval such that this term is equal. Moreover, since the floor of alpha times n plus 1 divided by 2 is an increasing sequence, we can choose these two values consecutively. This implies that we can find an n satisfying this equality here and also this inequality. And this means that if alpha is not an even integer, then we have no solution. And therefore, we are done.